hallelujah. It's good to be here this beautiful morning. Please sit down, everybody. I, I want to say a big, big thank you to my uh, friend and brother, um, Dr. David Oloke and his beautiful wife uh, for this opportunity, opening their doors to me on a Sunday morning. Yeah, on a Sunday morning. Um, it's not the easiest of things to do on a Sunday morning. Um, but I want to say a big, big thank you, sir. Thank you for the, the reception, the, the hospitality. And I was saying to myself um, last night that if anyone wants to fast, uh, Pastor Lola's house is not the place to go. <laughs> I had to put my foot on the brakes, you know, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Glory to God in the highest. Uh, I've, I've followed Pastor David for quite a while and I've listened to quite a number of his messages and I've been blessed. I, you know, from Bible days, there had been fake prophets. How do I know? Remember, I'm sure your pastor had told you the story of this woman in 2 Kings who said to her husband, when she saw Elisha will come into the city every now and then, she said to her husband, let's build a pent, you know, for this man, a room for him over our house. She said, because I perceive that this man is a true man of God. So for there to be something true, that means there's something false. Okay, so there had been fake prophets long time ago. In Nigeria, we'll say there had been fake prophets. It's not today, it has stayed. Mm. Somebody say to me, it has stayed. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, just like the prophecies of um, the, the apostles, uh, they said to us that in the last days, you know, um, it will be two-pronged. People will begin to amass to themselves, you know, the kind of pastors that will say the kind of things they want to hear, number one. Number two, there will also be, because that's, it's a question of demand and supply. Because they demand such, there are also pastors who are ready to supply them such. And I want to rejoice with you, LifeGate today, and everybody here, uh, that you are blessed, that you have one of the very few and choice servants of God feeding you with the truth. And I want to ask you to do me a favor while your pastor sits down for everybody to rise and celebrate your pastor today. <laughs> Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. Thank you, sir. God bless you. We celebrate you. And I bring you greetings from House of David for my family. And I trust God that this will be a beautiful time of fellowship together in Jesus' name. Please be seated. Okay, so um, I actually followed you for a while now, and I um, see the beautiful work uh, that Pastor has done with uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I'm supposed to teach on verse 7. Uh, I'm supposed to teach on verse 7, get understanding, get understanding. So quickly, I will read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7, uh, just from a couple of, maybe about three or four translations. It says, consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. The New International Version says, reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Uh, the Weymouth New Translation or Testament says, Mark well what I am saying. The Lord will give you discernment in everything. The contemporary English version says, If you keep in mind what I have told you, the Lord will help you understand completely. Uh, the Passion Translation, it says, Carefully consider all that I've taught you and inspire you with wisdom and revelation in everything. Hallelujah. Now, uh, it, so we're going back to the old King James Version. It says to consider. Um, I, I want you to first of all understand that all of God's word is to be considered. All of God's word is to be considered. However, when God through any of the writers of scripture says to consider something, 
it means that thing is very important to God. And whatever is important to God has to be important to you if indeed you are a child of God. Can I say that again? Whatever is important to God has to be important to you. So when God, by the mouth of Paul, says to consider what he was saying, uh, God was trying to let you know that this is very crucial. This is important. Hallelujah. Uh, so now, now consider what I say is an authoritative instruction indicative of the fact that Paul was speaking not just his words, but the word of the Almighty God. Uh, consider um, the psalmist, once, you know, a couple of times you, when you read the Psalms, you see the word Selah. Uh, Selah also partly means to pause and think about this thing. So consider, it means pause. Don't just gloss over, don't just rush through. Pause, think about um, these things. And the Holy Spirit uh, will make you understand the tenor of you know, God's word. Now, what did Paul say here to consider? Remember, Paul was speaking to his ministry son, uh, to Timothy. What was it that God said to, uh, said to Timothy through Paul to consider? That basically, the Christian is compared with three, you know, major professions. Number one, like your pastor has taught you, the soldier compared to the soldier. Some would say to me, the soldier... The athlete and the farmer. Can we say that again? The soldier, the athlete, and the farmer. Now, so approaching your life from these three perspectives is, a, is very crucial because it makes you grounded as a believer. Now, for each of these categories, you know, there are specific rules of engagement. For each of these categories, there are specific rules of engagement, but I will try to bring out certain rules that are common to all. And so, for the soldier, we have um, a commitment, discipline, and endurance. So, for the soldier, we're looking actually at endurance. So, commitment, discipline, and endurance. Now, the instruction that Paul gave to Timothy said, Endure hardness as a soldier of Christ. I mean, to be a soldier. Um, it's not an easy thing. I have quite a number of friends, not, not, not many of them, a few of them who went into the armed forces when we left um, secondary school. There's one or two of them are generals today. Yeah, of course, you know. So there are certain things that they will pass through in their minds and in their physical bodies that they don't feel now. I can't try it because I didn't endure that kind of hardness. They may not be able to preach like I'm preaching, but I can't do stuff like they're doing. So, for a believer, there are certain hardness you, you pass through um, that God is actually training ground, you know, uh, for you. And that's why sometimes I'm careful, you know, in telling people and saying that you're going to come out of it. Because God may want, to, may want to put you in that thing for the next one or two, three years. He wants you to develop muscles. Sometimes God is telling you push this mountain. And you believe because God has told you to push the mountain that the moment you push the mountain, the mountain will move. But God is not ready to move the mountain. He actually just wants you to develop your muscles. Do you get the point now? So it says consider hardness. It says endure hardness as a soldier of Christ. So what hardness does to a soldier is that it deadens a soldier to civilian affairs. Hardness. Uh, it makes you, you look at civilian affairs and they don't make too much meaning to you. Okay, so for the athlete, there's also, there's also commitment, discipline, and focus. Commitment, discipline, and focus. And, um, you know, I remember for all of us, most of us who had, you know, the opportunity to participate in some bit of running here and there, uh, I remember exactly for the relay race, for the relay race, especially for the starters. You know that the people on the relay race, everybody has to stay on their lane. First of all, can we look up and remember this? You know, each person stays on their lane. First of all, the first person, if you're looking at it with your physical eyes, he, the first person appears like far behind. because the second, but, but based on the calculation of the distance, is the same distance. So that's why we understand from scriptures that you don't have any business comparing yourself with another person. 
They have their race, you have your race. And the other thing, again, is that you, you're taught that the moment you make a mistake of veering off your lane to another lane, you're disqualified. So one of the things about the athlete is that he has to be focused. No matter what it is, he has to be focused. So as a believer, you have to be focused. These are the things that Paul was saying to Timothy to consider. We'll talk about um, the farmer briefly also. So for the farmer, we have commitment, discipline, and patience. Commitment, discipline, and patience. So you see that for the three of them, we have commitment and discipline. For the soldier, we have um, endurance. Okay. For the athlete, we have um, focus. And for the farmer, we have patience. We have patience. Ah. So the general rule of engagement is that you cannot afford to get yourself involved with anything that will not add to you. You cannot afford to get yourself involved with anybody or anything that will not add to you. So I've said in House of David many times that anything you do and anybody you meet is either adding to you or subtracting from you. They're either multiplying you or dividing you. So you have to be very careful. The things you're engaging, the people that you allow access, you know, into the recesses of your heart. You cannot behave uh, like those who don't have a relationship with God because you have been bought with a prize. You have actually been bought with a prize. So, um, now I want to say something here. You must have controlled appetites. You must have controlled appetites. And when I talk about controlled appetites, I'm not talking about food alone. I'm talking about everything you do. The kind of meal you take in the realm of the spirit you have to, it has to be controlled. Now, you see, everything you listen to, everything that enters into your life, you know, through all your gates, through your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your touch, and all of that, all of those things have an effect on your life because they seep into your soul. Now, remember the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, when they were, you know, being put to test? Three years, they were going to be in school. And Daniel said to Ariok, he said, we don't want to eat of the king's dainties. Just give us, you know, vegetables and, and nuts. That's all we want. So that was what they ate for three years. And they understood that, you see, there are certain things you cannot engage in. You cannot afford uh, to engage in. So you must have controlled appetites. Say with me, controlled appetites. So it's not everything on social media that is beneficial to you. Paul said all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. You cannot dress anyhow as a believer. You cannot talk anyhow as a believer. So your appetites must be controlled. I listened to Pastor Lola's message on an athlete's obedience, and I like a particular statement she made. She said that as a Christian, you have to do as inspired and not as you want. So this is me quoting your pastor to you. Did you hear that when she said it? Are you sure you heard it? Are you sure? Okay, me, I know I heard when I, I, I know I heard it when I listened to her. As a Christian, you cannot do as you want. It has to be as inspired. Glory to God in the highest. Uh, so, in House of David, I say, for instance, that service to God is not as convenient. It is as commanded. It's as commanded. Actually, there's really nothing in life that is convenient. Can I ask you a question? Is it convenient for you to wake up in the morning, tomorrow morning and go to work? There's nothing in life that is convenient. The last time, you know, when you were small, I don't know how much of injections they do now, but when we were small, you felt sick, you knew you were going to have an injection. Having an injection wasn't convenient, but you needed it. Yeah. 